I love vampires. But that's probably news to no one. I also love miniature war games. Again, no epiphanies happening just yet. If I want to play a vampiric army in Age of Sigmar, one of the most popular fantasy miniature war games, there are a few options. The problem with all of these options, however, is that while the commanders, generals, and leaders are all vampires, none of the troops are. What ends up happening is my quote-unquote vampire army is largely zombies, skeletons, or ghosts. I want Rise of Lycan's level of vampire army. Luckily, there is an option for one vampiric unit, and that's Blood Knight. They're elite, combat heavy, and generally badass. But five of them cost a hundred dollars. That's 20 bucks a pop. That's kind of a hard pill to swallow, especially if you want to run more than one unit. Luckily, there's a solution. Kit bashing. Blood Knights are no strangers to kit bashing. A lot of people share the same feelings that I do about the value of the kit, but none of the examples I've seen online have resonated with me. So let's see if I can come up with a conversion that I'm happy with. The goals of this project are simple. Create something that blends with the current range, is cheaper than $20 a model, and looks like a kit that could exist, meaning it isn't obvious that it's a conversion. You know what I mean. <laughs> Step one is to figure out what bits we need. Blood Knights are armored mounted cavalry. So we need an armored mount, armored legs, torso, left and right arm, a vampiric head, a shield, and a lance. We also need an oval base, but those aren't really hard to find. Step two is planning which bits to use. A great place to start is the company that makes the range you're trying to mesh with. Let's start with what I thought was the most obvious solution. There's this kit that goes by a few names, but one of them is the Terror Geist. This box comes with a vampire lord in blood dragon armor. Blood dragons are a very popular order of the blood knights. If you could source five of these guys, toss on a few head swaps and bang, you have a complete unit. But unfortunately, they're kind of hard to find. So I had to resort to looking at other kits. Some patience is required as you sift through each option on the website, mentally constructing the miniature in your head. Alternatively, you can look to other companies that make similar games to see if there are options there, and you can also buy from companies that specifically make fantasy bits, no game attached. In my research, I found what I think are the best conversion options for Blood Knights. Drake Spawn Knights. It's really kind of obvious. Fully armored, sharp, pokey design elements, great lances, evil, what more could you want? Okay, well maybe a mount that isn't a lizard. So, we need an evil mount that's more in line with our vampires. There are a few options of heavily mounted cavalry in the newly minted Slaves to Darkness army, but the new knights very annoyingly have the rider's legs attached to them, and they're also a little big. So, let's reverse in time to when GW was more kitbash friendly and less dynamically posed. The previous Chaos Knights have excellent steeds that we can use for our Blood Knights. Okay, now for the shields. We could use the Drake Spawn Knight Shields with some modifications, these could work. However, GW makes an upgrade kit for Graveguard, an undead unit. It comes with awesome shields and a banner that we'll definitely use. These will help bring us back to the realm of death and less evil elfish. The last thing to square away are the heads. My friend found these great generic vampire heads online that could work. Alternatively, there are a lot of great vampire heads in the GW range from various characters. Finding extras of those would work great as well. Step three is buying the bits, and there are a lot of options here. You could straight up buy the kits you need and then sell the parts you don't. For instance, you could very easily sell the cold ones from the Drake Spawn kit. People need those for Lizardman stuff, undoubtedly. You could buy the bits off of sites that sell individual parts for a buck or two. I found these options aren't great if you need a lot of bits, but it's very convenient if you only need a few. Another option is eBay. A lot of people will sell small or large quantities of bits. For example, I found five chaos steeds for $2 a pop on eBay. Lastly, yeah, my favorite option, friends. I'm friends with Dan, who is something of a bit master. I met up with him to source my chaos steeds. To 
Before my Drake spawn nights, I turned to John in my moment of need. John had an entire unit of them without their cold one mounts he wasn't using and he just gave them to me for free. So far, I spent literally zero dollars and basically have an entire unit. I bought the shields I mentioned earlier and had some vampire heads laying around. And for 20 bucks, I had all the parts I needed to make more than five blood knights. If the divine wasn't watching over you and you wanted to make the same blood knights, it would cost anywhere from 50 to 60 US dollars. The shields cost $20, the knights cost 33, and I'm assuming you could sell the cold ones which would cover the cost of the chaos steeds. We're sitting at roughly half the cost of GW's blood knights, but will they look good? We'll find out after a brief commercial interruption. Today's sponsor is Red Grass Games, a miniature hobby accessory manufacturer. They've made a web palette which I'm sure you've heard of. At the moment, they have a Kickstarter campaign for their miniature handle, which is simple and elegant in design. The handle is ergonomic for a comfortable grip, and the cap on top rotates 360 degrees smoothly and with ease with just your pointer finger and thumb. Should you need to paint more than one miniature, you only need to buy the extra caps, not extra holders. You can then hot swap minis to your heart's desire while batch painting your Space Marines. The minis are held in place with sticky tack so it can accommodate any base size and shape. And the holder comes with extra should you need it. The holder also features a magnet in the bottom of the handle. And when paired with the included metal disc, has increased stability on your painting table. It can also stick to all sorts of other things because it's a magnet, duh. Which means you can have a larger piece of metal for even more stability or you can attach it to your fridge for reasons. Also, when pledging to the Kickstarter, you get a free physical book authored by Angel Geraldez covering miniature painting topics like color dilution, color theory, and more. Redgrass Games Kickstarter is only two weeks long, ending on June 4th, with a fulfillment starting immediately in July. You can find the campaign linked in the description below. Thanks for supporting this channel, Redgrass Games. Now back to the conversion. All right, the step everyone's been waiting for, myself included. Step four. Let's start with the mount. After about an eternity of mold line removal and gluing the two halves together, there wasn't a whole lot to do. The bulk of the work was filling in the various eight pointed star designs and then sanding to make sure they were nice and flat. Pretty simple. I prefer milliput for this kind of operation. There were several areas on the mounts where there were arrows, which don't really make any sense to me, so I shaved them off where I could or just changed them a little bit. I cleaned up a lot of the plastic shaving residue with thin plastic cement, which I do very often throughout this entire process. That was it. Mounts converted and ready for vampire butts. Speaking of vampire booty, let's start with the basic blood knights. Because these dark elves are designed for horses that are a little bit thinner, there's a bit of a gap in their legs when you glue them together. That's no problem. It's nothing a little bit of green stuff or Milliput can't fix. A lot of these Dark Elf models have little Dark Elf sigils on them that just need some simple shaving off with an X-Acto knife. The last conversion I did was the head. I grabbed a helmet from a Black Knight sprue and hollowed out the skeleton head inside of it. I then took some vampire heads and shaved them down a lot to fit inside the helmet. This takes some patience and a lot of back and forth checking the fit. Once I had a nice fit, I glued in the head and slapped on a shield and bang. Two standard blood knights done. One a little bit more derpy than the other one. I messed up the shaving of his head. Don't tell anyone. Now we're on to the command unit for the blood knight, starting with the most simple, the musician. I glued on Manfred von Karsten's bulbousy head and a horn that came with the Drake spawn kit. And then to tie him with the rest of the unit, I gave him a lance and strapped one of the shields on his back. Boom, musician squared away. Now we're getting into a slightly more difficult territory. With the standard bearer, I wanted to go with a female head from the Coven Throne kit. Deciding on a female blood knight might come as a surprise because in the game they're entirely depicted as being male. But upon reading a recent death novel, I discovered that Neferata has a personal blood knight retinue, as one does, and several of the unit are females, which makes perfect sense. There are plenty of ferocious female vampires in Warhammer lore. Because she was female, I wanted to differentiate her armor from the males by adding some boob armor. I built up a little ramp on her chest with Milliput and using some color shapers and water, slowly got the shape correct. 
After it was cured, I took it a step further and sharpened it up with some sanding and scraping. I added a little detail to this armor section with some files, cutting in some wedges along the peak. In my mind, it made it appear as more gothic. Once that was done, it was time to move on to the banner. I grabbed one of the lance arms and snipped off the lance and with a pilot hole, drilled a hole in the hand where the lance once was, making sure to stab myself in the process by holding my finger immediately behind where I was drilling like a moron. The hole I drilled matched the diameter of a piece of brass I was going to use as the flagpole. I held up the banner next to my standard bearer and adjusted the hand position, glued the hand in place, and noted where to cut it to length. I put a little skull on the end cap on the bottom of the flag because skulls are cool, obviously. Lastly, I attached a sheathed sword to her back from an old empire sprue because she needs a weapon to fight with. She isn't going to be slapping fools with a banner. That finished off the standard bearer for the unit. The last and most complicated knight we'll make in this video is the Castellan, or the leader of the unit. I started with the head, which was very similar to what I did for the standard Blood Knights. I hollowed out a Black Knight helmet and stuck a female vampire head inside of it. The helmet looked a little too large for her head, but we'll fix that later. I wanted to break away from what I had been doing with the other models, so with this one, I used the torso of a Malusai, one of the few properly sized armored females in Age of Sigmar. Because I was able to source all my parts without spending any money, I felt okay buying this kit especially for my Castellan and future vampires possibly. I started by removing the weapon from what would be my Castellan's shield arm, and I then glued that to her torso. The angle of the arm wasn't correct for the shield, so I cut it off and changed the position with a little paperclip wire armature. I then bulked out her lower torso and her arm in preparation for the next step. The Malusai have no armor on their back, so I had to do my best and create some. I started with a quite flat and rectangular looking piece of armor. I added in some pointy bits at the bottom to give it more flair and added some arm slots for comfortable slaying. Once that was cured, I added a bit more on top to give it the feel of a typical vampire collar and added a little rim to the top. Once that was cured, I decided to add a spike down the middle that tapered to a point but also flat against the armor. I was having a lot of fun adding various details to this armor to make it look more interesting and practicing my newfound sculpting skills that I had learned in last week's video. On to the next detail. There's quite a bit of chainmail on the Drake Spawn Knight's lower half, so I repeated that detail on the upper half to cover up some of the skin of the Malusai torso. I had to practice a few times to get this right. It's not perfect by any means, but what I found worked for me was to put down a uniform, thin veneer of green stuff where you want it to be chainmail, sculpt it around like a bit of thick fabric, smooth it with color shapers and lotion, and then with a correctly sized pokey tool, I used this thicker sewing needle, I poke the green stuff and push up a little bit. I go down one row and then move over to the next row, getting sufficiently close to the previous one I just completed, pushing and poking. I added this all over the model, even on her head like she was wearing a chainmail hood. This helped to bulk out her head a bit, making the helmet look not so awkward. Next, I added some belts to break up large sections of my semi-bad chainmail. I then decided to add some additional detail to her stomach because it seemed a little strange that she was essentially wearing a belly t-shirt made out of metal. I made a little triangle with a rim around it, which in hindsight is a great way to stab yourself in the stomach when you bend over, so we'll just say it's fabric and not metal. Suck on that, comment section. Next up, the transformative part. The Malusai kit has these cool shoulder pads that are designed for one specific shoulder, but with some modification, I was able to use two of them for my Castellan. I also took another piece of my armor from that sprue and sliced off the fabric bit and added that to the model as well to bulk out her armor and to replace my chainmail with stuff that doesn't look so awful. Lastly, we need a sword. So I dug through my bits and found this gnarly looking dark Yaldar one. At the moment, it's a bit too sci-fi-ish, but with some modifications like snipping off a portion of the pommel, removing the sigil, and filling the hole in her glove, it'll fit right in with my vampires. Gluing it all together and you have an awesome Castellan to lead your vampires to bloody, murderous battle. There's my completed, kit-bashed Blood Knight unit. 
I'm super proud of these guys and genuinely had a ton of fun putting them together and making something special that I was happy with. In the end, I spent around 40 bucks because I bought the extra Malusai kit that you don't have to get. I saved a ton of money kit bashing this unit and got what I think is a significantly cooler unit of Blood Knights in the typical box. And you can too by using the kits that I did. I look forward to more converting and kit bashing in the future. This was too much fun to not do again. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this one, I have other similar ones that you can find linked at the end of this video. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you can hang out and chat about your miniature painting projects, or the best way to roll a green stuff sausage. You can also buy hobby equipment that I recommend in the description of this video, and also the vampire model that I produced. Subscribe or die! But most importantly, don't forget to pay my medals!